My name is James Martyr. I'm a Republican candidate for the United States Senate. I entered this race because incumbent Illinois Senator Mark Kirk's voting record is out of touch with the people of Illinois, especially due to his recent no vote in the defunding of Planned Parenthood. After their egregious video surfaced that we all saw, that was a violation of federal law that that agency, or whatever you want to call it, is engaged in. I will stand for the rule of law. Next vote, we had a vote on the Sanctuary City Bill. Senator Kirk was the lone Republican senator who did not vote to defund Sanctuary Cities. Again, these cities, Chicago, San Bernardino, Champaign, Illinois, are in violation of federal law. I will stand for the rule of law. He's been a consistent supporter of gun control. He's got enough rating by the NRA. I will stand for your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms as unequivocally stated in the Bill of Rights. I have a passion and a premise that the people of the state of Illinois should have a senator that's looking out for them. You know, we have many concerns here that face our nation. We need to bring our great nation back and return to our country's foundations of life and liberty. It is the right time to send a senator to Washington, D.C., whose first interest is the liberty and security of you, the American citizen. Yes, and just to let you guys know some breaking news while we were here, uh, Trump won the South Carolina primary and Jeb Bush just dropped out. That's very interesting news. Uh, anyways, thank you, Art. Thank you to our moderators. Thank you to James Martyr. Mostly, uh, most importantly, thank you all for showing up here. Uh, it shows that you, you took the time to come and that you care about the issues. Uh, now, I know I'm not the senator, Senator Mark Kerr. Uh, my name is Matt Costardo. I'm his uh, state uh, field director for the campaign. But if you allow me to speak on his behalf, uh, I hope to answer your questions. And uh, if I don't have any of the answers, I'll make sure to get back to you. Real quickly, uh, Mark Kirk is committed to three things. Uh, one, he's committed to uh, protecting Americans from the threat of terrorism at home and abroad. He's, uh, he's committed to protecting our veterans, the ones who have service in this nation, fighting the corruption of the VA. And he's uh, committed to putting America back on a responsible fiscal path. Uh, real quickly with national security, uh, when it comes to national security, Senator Kirk wrote the most recent sanctions bill against Iran. Um, Iran, as we know, is the foremost world sponsor of terror, and we can't allow them to have $150 billion in sanctions money back, uh, and we can't allow them to develop nuclear weapons. Uh, our opponent, Tammy Duckworth, uh, from the Democratic side, she wants to take in 200,000 Syrian refugees. That's dangerous. Uh, as we know, ISIS has taken over parts of Iraq and Syria. Um, they've taken over Syrian government buildings, and they, are, and they have the uh, capability of producing passports, fake passports. To take in 200,000 Syrian refugees would be absolutely dangerous, and we can't allow it. Um, when it comes to veterans, Kirk is a 23-year veteran of the Navy Reserves. He's a commander and a U.S. Naval Intelligence Officer. Um, in fact, when he became a senator, he had to downgrade his security clearance. That's how high up the uh, chain of command he was. Uh, we're dealing with corruption in the VA every day, backlogs, uh, and suicide hotline calls that are going to the voicemail. Uh, we see it every day, and we're committed to fighting it. So thank you very much. Mr. Scarra, thank you for the update on South Carolina. And the first question happens to be on Iran. Uh, we know Senator Kirk's opposition to the nuclear agreement with Iran. Where do we go going forward? What steps does he propose to ensure a nuclear-free Iran? Again, uh, Senator Kirk is one of the most, the foremost uh, senators against Iran and this nuclear deal with John Kerry and Barack Obama. We're very opposed to it, 
and we will continue to fight uh, against the nuclear Iran. Uh, like I said, Senator Kirk uh, wrote the most recent sanctions bill, and we will continue to, um, to, to make sure that Iran can't develop nuclear weapons, and, and make sure that we won't allow them to get their $150 billion in sanctions relief. Thank you. Mr. Carter, on Iran. That bill was a disaster for the American people, for the world, and for our allies in the region. It needs to be reined in. But guess what our Congress did, our Senate did? They voted 98 to 1 on the corker Cardin bill that allowed the President to negotiate this deal. Everybody but Tom Cotton of Arizona voted for that bill, and one person wasn't there. I would not have voted for that bill. The Senate gave up its advice and consent clause of the Constitution to the President to let him negotiate a deal that was a disaster for us. I would stand against that. Question number two is about care for the veterans population. What do you see as the biggest need for, for our veterans population and what should be done to uh, help them? And uh, we'll go ahead with uh, Mr. Martyr. So first, we need to investigate the crisis of incompetency and corruption in the VA. Um, it's a disaster. Um, my mother uh, worked and retired from the VA for 20 years in Peoria. Um, I was in that, I've been in that facility. I remember when she went to Decatur and told me how bad it was then. I know it's much worse now. And we know it's much worse. Senator Kirk's been sitting on a chairmanship for funding for the VA and oversight of that. He's been in Congress for 15 years, 10 as a congressman, five as a senator now. So this problem has been going on for a long time, yet it's not solved. Uh, it starts with investigation and it starts with fixing it. Um, we need to look at free market reforms for our veterans, give them some choice, let them go to the hospitals uh, that are in their communities where they can get the help best, um, and then fund the VA system to the point where we have efficient, effective hospitals that are also part of, of the opportunity for our vets but we need to fix the problem. It's a mess and someone needs to straighten it out now. Yeah. And Mr. Castardo, on behalf of Senator Kirk. Yes, um, like I mentioned, Senator Kirk is a 23-year veteran of the Navy Reserves. He served in Iraq, Kosovo, Afghanistan. Uh, he understands uh, the, the issues of veterans. Um, now, Tammy Duckworth, on the other hand, who our opponent, appointed by Robin Boy, but she served as the head of the VA uh, for a time. And um, while she was there, just look at the disaster that that was. Um, she fired whistleblowers, she screwed it up. There's a backlog for years of, of some of the cases there. Like I said, we recently uncovered Senator Kirk, um, and we've been looking into the fact that uh, the suicide hotline for our veterans, uh, some of those calls have been going to voicemail, and that's just completely unacceptable. We're committed to looking into issues, the Senator, and uh, dealing with the corruption there, and, um, and, and we support uh, our veterans, and so, uh, yes, thank you. This is right back to the circuit for Mr. Uh, for Senator Kurtz. Would you stop the transfer of surplus military equipment to local police departments? Recently, I was one of the few people to see a $773,000 armored vehicle that was re recently given to the LaSalle County Sheriff's Department. Would you stop such transfer of surplus military equipment to local police? Thank you for that question. Now, when I said that I might not have every answer, that's one of them. I don't have the Senator's response um, on that issue. Um, now, I can absolutely look into it and get back to you on that, though. Thank you. Mr. Mark. So I think that's an interesting um, question. Um, should, I repeat, should I repeat the number? $773,000 armored vehicle given to the South County Sheriff's Department. Would so you stop the transfer? 
of surplus military equipment to local police departments. So, so, the, so there's two parts to me that would be important in this question. One is, we, if we do have to um, get rid of uh, equipment we don't need for our military, what's the best and most efficient way for us, the taxpayer, to get rid of that? The second is, is that an appropriate thing to do at the local level, and is that an appropriate type of equipment? So I'm not sure I would be against that, but it depends on whether that's appropriate or not. If the local police need that kind of vehicle, I'm kind of wondering why. I mean, our military is here to, for the defense of our country. I'm not sure why we need certain types of vehicles. I don't know the specifics about this one. But there may be equipment that may be well served uh, locally, and, and if we've already paid for it, we're just um, taking it off the accounting books from the federal side and giving it to local governments, um, depending on what equipment we're talking about, I don't know if I have a problem with that. Um, Thank you. Let's turn to the national health care question. We'll start with Mr. Martyr. Would you eliminate Revise or replace President Obama's health care law? Absolutely, unequivocally repeal it. It's unconstitutional, it's unconstitutional on multiple fronts. It's assault to our li religious liberty. Um, it's a disaster. I'm a business owner. I've owned my own consulting business for 13 years. When I left my Last corporate job, I had to buy insurance for my family in the private insurance market. My cost and cost of the 20 to 30 plus million people in that market have risen over 100%. Um, my personal cost to the tune of $7,000 more than I was paying in 2010. And I've been a little busy this fall, so I don't know what the increase is this year, but I can tell you it went up. My father's health care cost this year, 81 year old retired. Um, he, his cost went up $240 a month to $400 a month. I know seniors on fixed income can't afford it. It is the Unaffordable Care Act. It's an assault to our Constitution. And on behalf of Senator Kerr, would, you, would the Senator eliminate and revise or replace President Obama's health care bill? We would uh, repeal and replace it. Senator Kirkwood. He's voted over 40 times to get rid of Obamacare. Uh, as James Martyr says, it's the Unaffordable Care Act. It hurts businesses, it hurts families, uh, and it's something that the Senator will continue to work hard to uh, replace, to repeal and replace. A very pertinent question that has come up in the last week. How should the Supreme Court nominations be handled? And uh, Mr. Castardo, go ahead. Um, so, Barack Obama absolutely can, can put somebody forward uh, as the president, he has the right to do that. But the Senate has the right to advise and consent on that appointment. Um, that's right, the Senate can vote on that. And, and so, if, if this nominee, now let me just preface this by saying, Antonin Scalia's funeral was today. Uh, this is still something that's so fresh, the guy was an absolute giant in the jurisprudence, was a conservative icon. Uh, I'm in law school, I respect the hell out of him. And so it's, it's, it's a shame that he's, he's passed on. Uh, it was his funeral today, so I think we need to respect his family and his legacy. Uh, but going forward, uh, like I said, the senator thinks that, uh, you know, obviously the Senate has a right to look at that uh, nominee, and if they don't approve, if the Senate doesn't approve of the nominee, they can reject him or her. So, on Supreme Court nominations, again, the Senate has the advice and consent responsibility. Um, Senator Kirk, in his advice and consent responsibility in recent appointments, uh, was the only one of the Republicans to stand um, for Vivek Murthy, uh, the least experienced surgeon general in history. Um, many other appointments, he's been on the wrong side of that vote. I will stand for a constitutional uh, justice like um, the late Anthony Scalia. And in, in this event, it is unequivocal to me that a justice understands the Constitution is his master and not the other way around. 
Every June, we understand um, that we get explained by the justices sitting there. All of a sudden, we're, we're they're telling us what's in that Constitution. I'm telling you folks, I know what's in the Constitution. I don't need to be told every June and lectured by the Supreme Court um, who's inventing law, creating law, looking at international courts and international justice as their they're a way to decide how the American Constitution, our liberty, and our, our laws and our rules are decided. We need somebody who understands that the Constitution comes first, and that's what we should be looking for in Supreme Court nomination. has no idea, or the president has no idea, how those will be funded. So again, we have a cash shortfall. Uh, sh cash shortfall. So how would you bring more money into the systems or take less money out? And do you believe that Social Security and Medicare need to be reformed? Matt? Thank you for the question. Um, you know, Senator Kirk is a uh, ranking member on the uh, House, the Appropriations Committee. Uh, that is a very powerful uh, committee with the ability to, uh, you know, that, that looks at the uh, discretionary funding for our country. As a uh, ranking member, the senator has been fighting wasteful spending in the government for years. He's committed to doing that. Um, we need to cut unnecessary federal programs, avoid tax hikes that stun economic growth and make it harder for our working families uh, to get by. Does Medicare need to be uh, reformed? Is that the question? Social Security. Social Security. Uh, we need to continue to, to fund those, but I think there needs to be, Senator Kirk thinks there needs to be uh, uh, some changes made. Right? So, we have $19 trillion in debt, and we just heard your individual liability out there. We have a spending problem in Washington, in D.C., not a revenue problem. We have plenty of revenues going to Washington, D.C. Um, on on the, the budget, um, we are funding things that our government has no business funding. We need to cut those out. If it's not an enumerated power in the Constitution, we need to cut it out of the federal budget. Um, I'm for sending some people home with pink slips out of Washington, D.C. That's what we're trying to do. Social Security was a controversial program when it was enacted in the 1930s. You know that? It's controversial back then. It should be controversial today. Um, if we um, were doing that, any of you and I were doing what they're doing there, they'd call the Ponzi scheme and be illegal. And that's what the federal government's doing. For every dollar they take in, they're, they're in, incurring a liability of 150 on every dollar now, and that's going up. It has to be fixed, it has to, we have to go to a modern system, it has to be overhauled, and we have to stop making promises from that fund to other people who never paid into it. We need to brainwash the community. We need to understand we can no longer spend our children and our grandchildren's money, uh, that is taxation without representation, it's time to send somebody to Washington who gets that and understands it. You mentioned the debt number at $19 trillion, but that does not include the promises made to our seniors um, um, in the form of Social Security and uh, Medicare. Uh, also, those numbers are not included in the debt ceiling. We go based on the $19 trillion instead of the $83 trillion that is really owed. And therefore, since they're not included in the debt ceiling numbers, they are not debated when we do a debt ceiling, because it's like Social Security's finance right. right? Okay. Would you be willing to, instead of mentioning the $19 trillion worth of code, um, I don't want to take that one this tomorrow, 
uh, like you mentioned it, um, be willing to met, you know, talk more about the 18, uh, $83 trillion. Um, ex exactly, I appreciate you bringing that up because the, uh, the 83 is the unfunded liabilities, the future liabilities, how do we fix that when, when generations of congressmen have voted for this, uh, these disastrous programs, these controversial programs that are supposed to save us all, right? Um, so you have to get rid of those liabilities. How would you do that? I'll tell you what, I've been paying in, I'm 53 years old, I've been paying into Social Security since I was 16 years old and had my first job in the Peoria Park District. Um, I would give up every single liability right now at 53 years old. If I could get out of the system, there's how we solve the problem. We ask Americans who would be willing to get out of that, I would rather do it in my own self-employment pension or my own IRAs then give it to the federal government who doesn't do anything well. Can anyone here think of any one thing the federal government is doing well right now? No. That's what I would do. Uh, the Senator knows that we need to put America back on a more responsible fiscal path. And, and there's, there's a lot of programs out there, wasteful programs that need to be cut. And there's lots of work ahead, and we need to keep, the Senator needs to keep, uh, keep up with it, cutting these programs and staying uh, committed to, to cutting our wasteful government programs in this country. Go ahead and ask one more. When is it appropriate to get involved in a foreign war, and to what degree? Mr. Kisper? Um Well, I'll, I'll, I'll Probably defer because I don't have Senator Kirk's specific answer, but obviously that's something that I can I can get the answer to and come back with for you for the panel. So it's appropriate to go to war when we have a declaration of war. We haven't done that for over 60 years that I know of. Um, I will insist on a declaration of war that names the specific enemy, country, terrorist organization, etc that the only acceptable outcome is unconditional surrender. If we're gonna put the lives of our men and women on the line for this country, it better be in the interest of the United States of America, we better have a declaration of war, and that way you and I, the citizens of this country, can be involved in the process and put every person in Congress on a vote and make them vote for it. And if we need to do that, let's do it the right way. Um, let's make sure it's in our national interest. That's when it's appropriate to do it. And I want to add one other comment. I have a number for Syrian refugees we should bring in, and that's zero. There are bad actors on both sides of that. You know, as as uh, the senators, um, as Matt mentioned here, um, Tammy Duckworth wants to bring 250,000 Syrians in. I think the number is zero. I would also argue that our senator, in his vote for the Omnibus Bill, just voted to fund bringing those Syrian refugees in. I would not have voted for that bill for that reason alone, plus about 10 or 20 dozen other reasons. But we need to stop that, and that is in the interest of our national security, is stop funding these things through omnibus bills and let's let's get to down to the business of the American people. Somebody personally gets brought in they get 30 seconds, right? So because my name was mentioned, I just want to mention that with the omnibus bill, um, that would go to funding our troops, our Medicare, our Social Security. I mean are those things that would you not vote to, to support the pay of our troops? Yes. Mr. Martyr? So here we go again. It's omnibus bills, right? Uh, that's going to stop paying our troops? I don't think so. Um, the federal government, again, we have a spending problem, not a revenue problem. There's plenty of revenues. If the executive branch decides not to pay our troops, that's on the executive branch. I'm sorry, it's not on Congress. I will not be voting for an omnibus bill ever. statements now and I think 
we'll start with uh, Mr. Martyr. Go ahead and uh, give us uh, two minutes. Again, my name is James Martyr. I'm seeking the Republican nomination for United States Senate. I will stay in the fight to bring about the following. Repeal Obamacare, more accurately described as the Unaffordable Care Act. I am pro-life. I will vote to defund Planned Parenthood and vote for pro-life legislation. In immigration, we need to stop the influx, legal and illegal, and force the law no to another amnesty program. On the budget, we need to balance it, fix the tax code, enforce the law, no, and make it flat and fair to the American citizen. We need to stop and slash the size of the IRS and stop giving that money in our treasury to foreign countries and crummy capitalists. On the Second Amendment, I will firmly support our right to keep and bear arms as unequivocally stated um, in the Bill of Rights. And for our military and veterans, we need to investigate and solve the, competent, the crisis of incompetency and corruption in the VA. And finally, we need to eliminate all federal funding for Common Core or any national education I entered this race on September 20th, and 64 days later, with the help of many people in this room and other people around the state, 162 people, I filed with 9,000 plus signatures in Springfield while I was doing my day job. In my day job, I work um, in the state of Illinois. I know the state of Illinois because I've worked in it. I've worked around the country. I've worked around the world. Um, I've worked in Mexico. I've worked in Canada, Brazil, and in many places in Europe. And you know what? We need to um, be fair when we talk about immigration and, and, and that stuff. But let's go by our laws. Let's bring it out. I'd love to have your vote on March 15th. Send a United States Senator who gets that someone needs to represent you, the American citizen taxpayer. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you all again. Uh, James, our, our moderators, and most importantly, uh, you all for coming today. Um, I know I didn't have all the answers, but what I do know is that we need to hold on to the Senate seat. If the Democrats get five, if they flip five seats, they get the majority in the Senate. If they get the presidential, they only need four Senate seats to flip. This, is, this election is about winnability. You need to be able to win in this state. Now, Mark Kirk, uh, you might not agree with him on some issues, and I understand that, but he is a fiscal conservative, he is a global hawk, he's committed to our veterans, and he's committed to fighting uh, for your freedom and, and for this country. Now, we've received the endorsements of Congressman Randy Holdren, Adam Kissinger, Governor Rauner, Leader Durkin, Leader Redonio. But most, most importantly, we seek your endorsement tonight. Um, Senator Kirk is one of the most thoughtful uh, and independent leaders in the Senate. He's, he's committed to, to fighting terrorism at home and abroad. He's committed to protecting our veterans. He's committed to repealing Obamacare. Uh, he doesn't want to take your guns away. He absolutely respects your Second Amendment right. Uh, but we need some common sense uh, laws in Chicago. It's one of the most violent cities in the country. Um, now, we, we want to keep serving you with integrity. And so on March 15th, we ask you, Please vote for Senator Kirk if you'd like to see him back in the Senate. Thank you very much.